I'm David M. Tanovich, Professor of Law here at the uh, Faculty of Law, University of Windsor, and I'm also Academic Director of the Law Enforcement Accountability Project. Well, Section 9 plays a pivotal role in my research on the issue of racial profiling. Um, the Ontario Court of Appeal, in a case called uh, Regina versus Brown, set out that racial profiling violates uh, Section 9 of the Charter and develops some standards in helping courts and lawyers um, identify when police detentions amount to racial profiling. So it's played a significant role because most of the litigation and research has centered on Section 9 of the Charter. While Section 9 protects everyone from um, arbitrary detention or arrest, so it ensures that there are objective standards that the police have to follow in deciding when to arrest somebody, when to detain somebody. So it protects you from um, arbitrary exercises of discretion, so where the police don't have any real objective grounds for suspecting that you're involved in criminal behavior, for example. So it protects you at that initial stage. It also protects Canadians that once detained, once arrested, that there are review mechanisms available in a timely fashion to review a detention or arrest. Well, who is most affected by Section 9 in terms of who the police are most likely to detain for a criminal investigation? We know from the research and the data that it's disproportionately youth, disproportionately racialized, and Aboriginal um, youth who are most likely to be um, detained by the police on the street. And so the standards that have developed in order to protect against arbitrary detention, against racial profiling, um, have benefited to some extent those most likely to be impacted by uh, police exercises of discretion.